Hi everyone, thanks for joining us at the Tenenis talk. I'm Min Tao from Center for Bayesian Speech and Signal Processing at the University of Surrey. The title of this talk is Event Independent Network for Polyphonic Sound Event Localization and Detection. And I also thank our co-authors, Chirap Iqbal, Chou Chang Kong, Yue Zhong, Wen Wu Wang, and Mark Plumley. There will be four parts in our talk. First introduction, and then I will talk about uh, uh, existing problems, and then the proposed method, and the con conclusions. So what is sound event detection and localization? So sound event detection and localization is to detect the sound events, as well as their corresponding onset and offset temporal information, as well as their uh, DOA estimation, corresponding DOA angles. So. And it has a lot of applications like robot systems, uh, tracking on specific types of sound sources and same visualization systems or smart homes or the like surveillance applications. Then I'll talk about the CELT in DKS 2019 and 2020. Back in 2019, task three, I think, I think it is the first time that DK started this task. Uh, the difference between 2019 and 2020 is in 2019, uh, the sources are static uh, and in 2020, the sources are moving. Um, and also the re resolutions of DOAs are different. It is 10 degrees in 2019 and continuous in 2020. Perhaps the biggest uh, improvement is evaluation metrics. In 2019, the performance of localization does not affect the performance of EAD. So and localization metrics are not class dependent. But in 2020, they used a threshold of T degrees to constrain F score and error rate. They consider two positives predicted under a threshold of T, which is equal to 20 degrees from the reference. And the localization metrics are computed only across each class. Now I'll talk about uh, some existing problems. The first one is the output format of some of the networks or some common networks. For example, the cell net or two-stage message. So the first one, uh, the RCD output format is the number of frames by number of classes. And the DOA uh, output format is the number of frames by number of classes by number of locations. Here we have inherent problems. Can you see what it is? Yes, the problem says the output format does not support the special case of the same type of event, but with different DOAs. So look at the, the, the figure on the right. Uh, as presumably there are two car sounds occurring at the same time. The, 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 these two car sounds are different car sounds, but they all belong to car categories. And they, they have their corresponding DOA angles, which are moving sources, but different. So for this case, this output format cannot express uh, this situation because the output, current out, uh, output format um, for each class, there will only be one localization information. And the second problem is for regression. Regression naturally uh, fits to estimate the continuous DOA, but it, it achieves worse performance than classification with even coarse resolution. So for DOA output format, it is observed that multiple classes usually have very similar lo location values. For example, at certain frames, the predictions of DOAs are like this. There are four rows, which indicates there are possible four events occurring. And you can you you only need to choose one of them, but look at the values; they are pretty similar. Uh, so only only the activated DOA is chosen, uh, but the values are very similar. That means that the dimensions of regressions are redundant. So which means, um, if we are given a certain amount of data, we are training um, a lot more dimensions than needed for regression, which makes regressions to be very hard to train. So the possible idea is to solve the problems. Um, for DOA predictions, it is better that we make this uh, output format to be number of frames by maximum of number of events 
by number of localizations. In this task, the maximum number of events is two because the, um, there are up to two overlapping events, but it can be larger than two uh, according to different tasks, of course. And also because of the previous talk to this special case, it is reasonable for us to think it as a separation task or borrow some ideas from the separation. So this problem is similar to the source separation one without the need to reconstruct the separated audio. So it is to separate the latent feature. Also we use trackwise output format, which means the number of tracks are equal to or higher than the maximum number of overlapping events. For example, for this network, we have two tracks as the output. So we assume these tracks are event independent, which means the predictions on each track can be of any type of event. They can even be the same type of event, which indicates that two same type events with different DOAs are predicted. And we consider a situation uh, with three uh, groups of targets uh, to be assigned here. So the first group of targets, it is it, presumably, let's say, if we assign speech to track one and car to track two, and for the second group, then we can still assign speech to track one. It is reasonable. And we can assign the new occurred uh, dog bark uh, uh, target to, to track two. And for the third group, what if the target is, uh, what, what if the targets are uh, dog bark and a car? How are we supposed to assign its tracks to? Um, it is uh, hard to predict. So now there's another problem aris arising, which is track permutation problem. And then we have our proposed method to tackle uh, all of the previous uh, mentioned uh, problems. So first, we decrease the regression uh, dimensions to be only two. We decrease the number of classes dimension to two because two here indicates there are up to two overlapping events. And to achieve that, we use trackwise output. It predicts an event and the corresponding DOA per each track. And then in order to solve the uh, track permutation problem, we use frame level uh, permutation environment training. And lastly, we, we also create, created a EAD constraint uh, to unify the onset and offset information uh, of SED and DOA branches. Then I'll uh, talk it in detail. So the input audio features we used are still log mail for some event detection and mail scale uh, intensity vector for DOA estimation. And the audio features and the mail scale intensity vector are plotted here. And the input features have seven channels in total that are calculated using a 1D convolutional layer. Uh, then this is our network architecture. We have basically three, three branches, ICD branch, DOA branch, and the EAD branch to unify the ICD and DOA predictions. So for ICD feature embedding, uh, there are four comp blocks. Each comp block contains two 2D convol convolutional layer with a kernel size of three by three and a batch norm layer and averaging pooling layer. And for DOA feature embedding, we have we use a revised uh, rest number 18 with two three by three 2D convolutional layer as a stem layer. And also the output format is trackwise. Uh, each track can only have at, at most one SED and one EAD, one DOA predictions. And then we talk about our permutation invari invariance training. Uh, it is a standard permutation environment training. So for uh, SED loss, we use uh, we can use binary cross entropy or categorical cross entropy. It depends on the style of your uh, ICD, ICD output. And for DOA, we used uh, mask the version of uh, L2 loss. Uh, the mask here for training, we used the ground truth of EAD, but for the test, we can use the SED predictions or the intersections of SED prediction and EAD prediction. And for permutation environment training, we first calculate the loss on frame level 
uh, meaning at, at each t we we calculate the loss and then t pit which is a frame level permutation in modern training assigns labels to different tracks to constitute all possible combinations of prediction target pairs uh, for example for this in, in this figure here we have two tracks output and two targets so it is possible it is actually we we have two uh, possible combinations the the first one is the yellow colors and the second one is the green color and for these two combinations we have we we can obtain two losses and we'll take the minimum of the, of these losses and take the minimum one to perform the pack propagation so the process of tippet is not only to perform the classification or regression training but also to pair the most probable predictions and labels inside of the network and for our, our experiment setup the hyperparameters we use are like this and there are six uh, comparison systems in our paper um, uh, the first of two are baseline foa and baseline mics which indicates the baseline methods using the ambisonics and uh, microphone array respectively and then we have track was one to three the difference is the track was one only uses the trackwise output but without ead and tippet um, but for trackwise two uh, we used ead with without but without tippet and we use lcd predictions as a mask and for trackwise three we use ead still there is no tippet and we use lcd and ead intersections as a mask and lastly uh, for our proposed event in network uh, um, we use EAD and TP together. And here's the result. Uh, the results are based on training using fold 3 to 6 and test on fold 1. So without EAD and TP, our track was 1 method is the worst among proposed methods. That is reasonable because we cannot assign the correct label to corresponding tracks. <clears throat> and for track wise 3, um, it is slightly better than track class 2, which indicates that the mask using LCD and EAD predictions is more effective than using LCD predictions alone. And for event int method, it achieves the best performance, which means additional EAD and tippet features all contribute to increasing the performance. And then we have our, our conclusions here. So we proposed a new end-to-end -end event independent network with trackwise output. And we use a frame level permutation in random training uh, to solve the uh, problem of a track permutation. Uh, we also use a event activity uh, detection to encompass its, uh, the feature embedding information from both SCD and DOA. So hopefully it can predict uh, onset and offset times more accurate. And the proposal system is easy to extend to more than two overlapping event cases. And lastly, thank you very much. And also, there's one last thing. Please check our improved method on our um, GitHub repository here. Uh, thank you very much.